All right. So what you're looking at here is my original 3D printer. This is a standard Ender 3 Pro that I purchased, gosh, forever ago now. Um, it's kind of really what catapulted me into 3D printing. It was the first machine I ever bought. Um, got it on a good sale on Amazon. It, it's been trusty. I still trust this machine from all of my litho pins, uh, all of my 3D lighting. This machine does quite a bit, so this is hands down one of my most reliable machines. It does have some upgrades. There's a dual Z-Rod back here. You can see the direct drive extrusion. I uh, threw a glass bed on here. There's some upgraded springs here. Oh, and the board. I changed the board out, put a newer control on it. So it essentially thinks it's an Ender 3 V2. But the reason we are here today is the extruder. So every time I go to run a, a print, I get maybe a... Uh, I'd say three or four millimeters high, sometimes a little more, and it stops extruding. My extruder's still spinning. I've gone back here and adjusted the gear on the extrusion motor. Uh, everything's good there. I'm not sure exactly what's going on. So my best bet is there's a Bowden tube, a very small one in between these two, and my guess is that Bowden tube needs to be replaced. Now I tried replacing it with some stuff that I just had laying around, but I don't really think it was the greatest. So now I've gone and bought some Capricorn tubing and I'm gonna get that swapped out with some nice tubing. So let's get to it. So what you just saw me do there was move the Z-axis. This is something I should have done from the beginning because now uh, the stepper motors are all locked. Um, as you saw, I was pressing down. I smashed this into my build plate. So now I'm probably going to be on level. Um, plus... Uh, So let's get the nozzle back up to temperature. Another thing worth noting, you saw the tubing that I pulled out of there. I, I tossed that already. This is the original piece that came out of here. When I first disassembled this to swap out the Bowden tube a while back, um, this was the piece that came out. I saved this. I will always save this because no matter what mutilation now occurs when pulling out the old Bowden tube. I have the original, which was still pretty good intact. Um, I kind of changed this out just because I was doing some routine maintenance and I was in there, so I did. So I save this at all times. I do the same thing uh, to my right here. You'll see the Ender 3 S1s. Same thing. I always hold a piece of the original stock Bowden tube just for reference for length. So. Like I said, bought some nice Capricorn tubing. I swear by this stuff. Uh, anytime I have to replace Bowden tubing, I try to put this on there, unless I have some garbage that came from another machine or another rebuild. So I'll kind of just line these up. Always comes with a nice cutter, which is always nice. Line the blade up there. Pull out your old piece if you can. Spin this guy around, and we should have a nice clean hole on both sides. Now, some people will tell you to cut like a 45 degree on here to allow the filament to flow through a little better. Honestly, I haven't had much of an issue with that. Uh, the Ender 2 over here was a little bit of an issue like that, but I really didn't have to go crazy with the 45 degree. One thing I am doing off camera is kind of reheating this with my hand and trying to straighten it out a little bit. I do think that that's pretty important. And you just wanna make sure that it is clean. Uh, one thing that I've always started to get into the habit of as well, 
bad things do happen at the factory. Even Capricorn, I'm sure, has bad lots every once in a while that get out. So every once in a while, I have found this tubing and the inner diameter is off the, the entire roll. And you put everything back together, it's a terrible time to find out. So one of the things I have gotten into the habit of doing is testing to make sure that my filament does slide nicely through the tubing before I even put it all back together. So everything looks good there. Let's jam this guy back down in here. Not sure how well you can see in there, but it's pretty gross. So I'm going to get the wire brush and a pick and we're going to clean that out a little bit. All right, luckily for me, I save everything. So this is actually from the original heat block that was on this machine. Um, from before I put the direct drive extrusion on it. So let's go ahead and get this guy installed. All right. And by hand, we're coming out, but it still feels like I'm, I'm, I'm facing pressure that I shouldn't. Something still isn't quite right here. Um, but we're going to run the extruder for a minute here and see if that helps any. Actually, I lied. We're going to take that out. We're going to need some of that cleaning filament that I know I have laying around in bulk. That way we're not wasting material that could be used on a print job and also using the cleaning material for what it's made for. So let's go ahead and keep a little bit of that through. I feel like I'm getting met with pressure there, like it doesn't even want to go through already. So the extruder motor is spinning. And we are getting some extrusion there, um, but that's not at all what it should be looking like, right? We, we all know what filament should look like as it's coming out of the nozzle and that's not it. So I did kind of crash the bed a little bit, um, or crash the nozzle more or less. When <laughs> So that's what extruding PLA should look like, coming out in that nice clean line. So we're going to run this whole length of cleaning filament through. And then we're going to try again. All right, well, I've got my program loaded. I've got everything ready to go. Um, but since I've changed the nozzle and biffed it a few times and touched it with my fingers while it's really hot, it's time to level this guy. Um, I'm sure it's out. So on this machine, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click. I'm going to go to motion. I'm going to go to auto home. All machines should have the auto home feature. Auto home. So I plan on doing other videos, more tutorials. Um, I'll probably do a little more in-depth one on how to level the machine later. But since we're already here, I'm not going to not do it. So we're leveled there. And if we look at the machine, it now says that we are at X8, Y8, Z2. Uh, this cool little control has the option where I can go into leveling tools. 
Um, actually, I lied. I think it's under motion. And go to bed tramming. So what this is going to do when I click this is it's going to go to all of the points that I would normally go to manually to level the bed, but it's going to do it automatically for me. Set my control back here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay the paper down where I know I want to touch off. And I am way off. I am in the air here. So we're going to adjust that. Again, so you can just barely almost not pull the paper out. And we're going to hit next. And again, we're going to drop the paper roughly where we think it's going to land, close to my leveling spring. And same thing, I'm nowhere near the bed here. So pushing that down onto the glass bed while we were working on this guy definitely made a lot of adjustments here. Leveling the bed doesn't take a lot of time. I will show you all how to do it manually in another video. That doesn't take much time either. Either, Even if you have an auto leveling bed, I still recommend doing what I'm doing right now every so often um, and just really making sure that your springs, your nylon bushings, whatever you got underneath your bed is nice and even. So we were way off. Also, I'm a firm believer in going back. So the same way you do the lug nuts on your vehicle when you change a tire, you hit them and you go back, right? That feels perfect. But I am still going to go back to my first two points just to double check. Um, and I do feel like that's a little loose. I'm going to come up a little bit. All I'm doing over here on the screen is just hitting next every time. Whenever I'm done, I can hit done. Feels a little tight. Next. Feels a little loose actually. Again, nice fancy auto leveling beds. You don't have to do this as often, but really this isn't taking a lot of time considering how much it really affects your prints. Um, I think a lot of people take shortcuts on leveling the bed because they think that uh, if the bed's not level, it'll work its way out on the, the top layers. <sighs> Trust me, you run into a million issues if your bed's not level, but again, that's another video. So we're gonna start the print here. And uh, we'll go from there.
All right. Well, battery died, but we now have our finished product. I'm gonna get it off the build plate here. So while I'm taking this off and getting the glass bed cooled down, I want to mention something. In all reality, with the amount of work that we did on both the Bowden tube here and, and all of that and changing out the nozzle and then we re-leveled the bed, the safe bet would have been to do a calibration cube or the Cali cat that I prefer. Uh, either way, a smaller calibration print would have been ideal. I trust this machine. I know this machine. Um, so I, I was able to, to gamble on it a little bit more, but just keep that in mind that running straight to a long, I mean, this was a 12 hour print uh, with a lot of filament used. So if this were a failed print and there was something off, we would have wasted a lot of time and material unneedingly. All right, well, I've got it off the bed and fortunately it did come out pretty well. Like I said, a calibration cube or a Cali cat or, or any calibration piece may have been a, a little bit better of an idea though. Hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know in the comment section, anything you agree with or disagree with in this video, maybe things you saw I did that maybe you do a little bit differently and uh, hope to see you at the next one.